Welcome to the channel. Well, it's been over a year since I put out my top 10 add-ons for Home Assistant, and I thought it was time to revisit the topic and see if anything has changed, what's new, and if my recommendations are the same. For those of you that don't already know, our Home Assistant add-ons are extra applications or services that extend the functionality of Home Assistant. These add-ons run in Docker containers within the Home Assistant ecosystem and can provide additional features like media servers, automation tools, remote access, and system monitoring. I'll be covering these pretty quickly, so use the timestamps in the description if you want to see a specific add-on. If you think I've missed any, then please let me know in the comments. Your time is precious, so let's jump on in. My first add-on, in my opinion, is one of the essentials. Although Home Assistant has come a long way around graphical user interfaces and moving away from the need to edit bespoke YAML configuration files, there are still going to be occasions when you need to roll up the sleeves and edit a file or copy a file into the filing system, as we did with the AI series of videos. And for this, there really is no better solution than Visual Code Studio. It's function rich, intuitive to use, and it's predictive autocomplete for entities comes in super handy. And if you want to find out more and install, then follow the link in the description. And if you need an alternative, then use File Editor. Simple and more lightweight, but gets the job done. Links in the description. Samba Share is an open source add-on for Home Assistant that enables file sharing across a network using SMB, or the Server Message Block Protocol. It allows you to access and manage your files stored on your Home Assistant device, such as backups, configuration files, or media from other devices like PCs, Macs, or mobile platforms. Samba Share integrates directly as an add-on once configured. It exposes designated folders such as the config and the media as network shares, accessible via standard file explorers with user-defined credentials for security. This eliminates the need for external tools or complex setup, streamlining file management within the ecosystem. Remember, if you hit issues, there are links to the Home Assistant Discord chats listed in the documentation. Or come join Smart Home Australia Discord channel and ask your questions there for community assistance. Backups are probably the least popular topic in Home Assistant that nobody wants, but everybody needs. Anyone that works in IT will tell you to back up your configuration and data. And if they know what they're talking about, they will tell you to use the 321 backup strategy, which means three copies of your data stored on two different types of media with one copy stored offsite which means away from where your home assistant is running. This gives you redundancy and resilience. If your computer dies, you've got a local backup. If your house burns down, you've got an offsite copy. It's a practical balance of safety and simplicity, widely endorsed by IT professionals and data security experts. Now I covered this in great detail in a previous video that you can access in the description. In that we use a combination of home assistant backups and Google backups and it worked fabulously and autonomously, links in the description. But things have moved along, and in the 2025.1 release of Home Assistant, the new functionality was released that made native Home Assistant backups much better. Now that's a long way of saying that the Home Assistant Google Drive backup, available from the add-on store, is still very much relevant and works very well. But you might like to use the internal native backup feature now. If you'd like a video that covers the native backup of Home Assistant, then let me know in the comments. Most of you would have started your Home Assistant journey by connecting Zigbee devices to Home Assistant through the built-in integration called Zigbee Home Automation, or ZHA as it's more commonly known. However, there is a more comprehensive and granular control method of connecting and controlling Zigbee devices and the preferred option for more technically advanced users called Zigbee to MQTT. Zigbee to MQTT, which is often abbreviated to Z2M, is an open source software solution that allows you to connect, control, and manage Zigbee devices in a smart home setup, such as Home Assistant, by using the MQTT, 
which stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport Protocol. It acts as a bridge between Zigbee Coordinator, which is the hardware device like a USB adapter, and your home assistant, enabling communications with Zigbee-based devices like lights, sensors, switches, and a lot more. The advantage of using Zigbee to MQTT over ZHA are that in general it supports more devices, which is currently stands at 3000 plus at the time of recording. It also allows for much greater control with more entities exposed. But for most people, it's logical to move to Zigbee to MQTT after starting on ZHA for compatibility and control. I've already covered this in the video and there's not much that's changed. I'll put a link in the description. If you're going to be using Zigbee to MQTT, then you're going to need an MQTT broker. Mosquito is a lightweight, open-sourced MQTT broker that enables communication between IoT devices. It acts like a middleman between MQTT clients, publishers, and subscribers. It's important in Home Assistant because it enables MQTT communications. Many smart home devices use MQTT, like Tasmoto and Zigbee to MQTT. Mosquito receives messages from devices known as publishers and forwards them to subscribers like Home Assistant. So without the Mosquito broker, your Zigbee to MQTT would not work. Remember that if you are installing a Mosquito broker, then you will also need the corresponding MQTT integration to be installed to take advantage of the add-on. This will automatically be detected once your Mosquito broker is installed. We cover the installation of the Mosquito broker in the Zigbee to MQTT video, link in the description below. The Matter Server add-on in Home Assistant is a critical component for enabling support for Matter, which is a smart home connectivity standard designed to make devices from different manufacturers work together seamlessly. Well, that's the theory. And although it had a slow start, it is becoming a lot more common and used by many more manufacturers recently, especially the likes of SwitchBot with their Hub 2 and soon to be announced Hub 3. Watch out for that video when it comes out. In March 2025, Home Assistant became officially MATA certified by the Connectivity Standards Alliance, or CSA as it's known. This is huge news because at the time of this video, this was the first open source project to receive this certification. Now the MATA server add-on operates as a separate process that acts like a MATA controller. This controller is responsible for communicating with MATA enabled devices like lights, plugs and sensors over protocols such as Wi-Fi, Ethernet or Thread. It links your MATA network referred to as a fabric to Home Assistant via WebSockets connectivity. This allows Home Assistant to discover, pair and control MATA devices as if they were natively integrated. Remember that if you are installing the MATA server add-on, Home Assistant will auto discover that you need to install the corresponding MATA integration. I cover more about MATA in the SwitchBot Hub 2 review, link in the description. ESP Home is one of the most important add-ons in Home Assistant because it allows users to easily create and integrate custom smart devices using ESP8266 or ESP32 microcontrollers. ESP Home is designed to work natively with Home Assistant, making it easy to add and control ESP-based devices without requiring MQTT or other complex integrations. It allows users to update firmware remotely via Wi-Fi, eliminating the need for physical connections to the device for flashing. ESP can control various sensors, relays, lights, displays, and even climate control devices, making it perfect for DIY smart home projects. I've not created a specific video for ESP Home, but we have used it extensively on the channel. If you'd like a dedicated video, let me know in the comments below. My next add-on is actually two, but they usually talked about together, and that's the InfluxDB and the Grafana add-on, which are essential for advanced data storage, analysis, and visualization. Home Assistant's built-in recorder stores historical data in a traditional SQL database, which is a SQL-like database, which you can switch to the Maria database. Check out the video in the description if you'd like to do this. However, as your system grows with many sensors and logs, it can slow down. InfluxDB is optimized for time keyed storage. 
specifically designed to handle IoT and sensor data efficiently. It can store years of historical data without bloating the main Home Assistant database. It has a better query performance, allowing for faster retrieval of large datasets compared to the SQL-based storage. Influx is generally installed with a Grafana integration. Grafana is used to create custom dashboards based on the data stored in InfluxDB. It provides custom graphs and charts, temperature visualization trending, energy usage, weather patterns, and much, much more. Just try Googling Grafana sample Home Assistant dashboards and see the amazing creations that people have made. I've created a dedicated video that covers the installation of InfluxDB and Grafana, along with some sample dashboards. Check out the video in the link below. Music Assistant is an open source add-on and integration for Home Assistant that turns Home Assistant into a centralized jukebox for managing and playing music from various sources. It's designed to unify your offline and online music libraries, such as local files on your NAS or streaming from services like Spotify, Apple Music or YouTube Music to then stream these to a wide range of compatible players or control through Home Assistant. I have two videos on Music Assistant with the most recently only a few months ago. It's a great add-on and with the likes of Home Assistant Voice PE, I can see Music Assistant only becoming more powerful over time. Check out both of those videos in the link below. Now we left the best till last. Frigid is an open source network video recorder designed for integration with Home Assistant, leveraging AI object detection to enhance security systems. Built on OpenCV and TensorFlow, it processes video feeds from IP cameras locally, identifying objects such as people, vehicles, or animals in real time without relying on the cloud services. This ensures both privacy and efficiency, making it an ideal solution for those seeking a robust self-hosted local surveillance setup. In Home Assistant, Frigate operates seamlessly as either a Docker container or as an add-on and interfaces via MQTT to deliver events, streams, and snapshots. The official integration, available through Hacks, provides camera entities and sensors, enabling low latency viewing and recording directly within Home Assistant interface. Performance can be significantly boosted with hardware acceleration, such as a Coral TPU, achieving high frame rates while maintaining minimal resource usage. Now we covered the Frigate installation and user cases in a previous video link in the description. If you have RTSP or OnViv camera feeds into your Home Assistant, I would strongly suggest watching this video and see how Frigate can become your security system recorder for the future. Links as always in the description below. Now, although this is my top 10 add-ons, there are so many honorable mentions that we need to call out. GoToRTC is an open source zero dependency streaming application that supports multiple protocols like RTSP, WebRTC and RTMP. It offers low latency camera streaming across Windows, Mac, Linux and ARM platforms and is available for Home Assistant. Or HyperHDR is an open source Home Assistant add-on that enhances ambient lighting with real-time HDR tone mapping and multi-thread video processing. It's optimized performance for low latency streaming on platforms like Raspberry Pis and supports protocols such as USB grabbers and WLED integrations. And finally, there is Node-RED, a powerful open source flow-based programming tool that allows you to create automation workflows and connect devices, services, and APIs with a visual interface making automation creation a breeze and as simple as a drag and drop and connecting boxes. The list really does go on. If you'd like a specific add-on covered in more detail that I've not covered already, then please let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can fit it into the filming schedule. I'd encourage you all to go and try the add-ons and see if they fit your needs. But be warned, if you don't need an add-on, then make sure to remove it or at least to deactivate the add-on so that it doesn't start on boot. Add-ons create Docker containers to run, and the more containers you have, the slower to boot up and the slow response times your home system will have. 
So try before you buy, but uninstall if not in use. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if you want to join other like-minded people, then why not join the Discord channel where smart home enthusiasts meet to solve each other's problems. And if I've helped you make a decision on an add-on, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.